So we're going to be changing just about everything now that I've had some experience running it completely stock for about a week. And jumping right into it, the first thing we're going to need is the GNOME tweaks. So let's go ahead and grab those packages. And GNOME tweaks is going to allow us to much, uh, well, easily change our icon and themes and things like that. And if you didn't notice, I'm a little zoomed in here just so you all can see what I'm doing a little bit easier. So now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and close this out for now. And one thing I want is this right here. This is Nordic. This is the theme I usually use when I'm running KDE Plasma. So we're going to go ahead and grab it and we're just going to follow some of the things it tells us to do on here. So we're going to extract the zip file into our themes directory. So first let's make sure we actually have a themes directory. So to do this, we're going to want to go over here. Uh, I'm not going to need any of this. And we're going to go control H to show all of our hidden files. And you can see I do not have a themes folder. So we're going to do new folder dot themes, just like that. Hit create. And now we have a dot themes folder within our home directory. So now that we've done that, we could go ahead and download this. And actually I'm going to see if they have a, do they have like an orangey accent? That's kind of what I would like. Or an Odic Polar, that's probably a nice one. Let's just go ahead and grab that. You kind of see what it's looking like. I personally like that a lot better. If we wanted to, just for example's sake, we could easily grab one of the darker ones. So if we go Nordic Darker here, which this is actually what I usually go with. So we just go ahead and download that, save it, click it, open the actual archive, bring this over here, and then we can, just like last time, extract that into our dot themes directory. So we go over to dot themes, extract, close. Now if I close this out, get rid of this, we can apply the darker theme instead. Just not showing up here, so what I'm gonna do is actually close and reopen this. So let's go gnome tweaks right here go over to appearance and it should be right here that is how you apply themes so now if i look over here we can kind of see that nordic darker theme it looks beautiful overall now the next thing we're going to go ahead and change is these icons these icons are hideous and you might have seen the tab i had open if i go over here i was on omg ubuntu looking at their eight best icon themes I'll go ahead and link this down in the description below. And I'm just going to go with this first one right here. This, I believe Manjaro uses this one on their GNOME version by default, and it is beautiful. So to go ahead and grab this, what we're going to do is just follow some of the instructions right on this OMG Ubuntu page. So let's go ahead, open up our terminal here and zoom in just a little bit. And to add this first, what we're going to want to do is add the repository. So we're going to go ahead and paste that on in. You can see the repository there. Go ahead and add that, type in our password. And once it goes ahead and adds that, going to have to hit enter to actually do that. We should be able to just do a sudo apt install and then that specific icon theme. So paste that on in and it's going to go ahead and do what it needs to do. All right, so now that that is done, I'm going to go ahead and close my terminal here. I'm going to check. It's probably not in there yet. It is not. So we're going to go ahead and restart the GNOME tweak tool once again. So it goes ahead and refreshes. And then if we go under appearance, we could go over to icons. And then here it is. You also have dark and light. If I go with the dark, for example, you can see it changed these icons here on the side. And overall, it already looks better. What I am going to do now is mess with my terminal a little bit here. So this does not look good. So what we're going to do is go up here, go over to preferences and here built into the GNOME terminal. Obviously you could use a different terminal if you prefer something else. But to me, I just use whatever terminal is in whatever uh, desktop I happen to be running. So I'm just going to keep on using this here. You could go ahead and change exactly how it looks. So if we go under profiles and go to this unnamed one, you have all your text options, a bunch of different things here, but we're going to go over to colors. If I uncheck this right here, it's going to completely get rid of that color theme and go with a the basic white. You have a couple built in schemes here too. So if I went with like gnome dark, for example, I could keep this color scheme. And one thing I'm going to want to do is uncheck use transparency from system theme, check use background transparency and enable that. 
I always love to have a transparent terminal. I just think that looks way better. And for now within my terminal, I think that's all I'm gonna change. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. And there's a lot more things you could do. One thing that I usually like is to have NeoFetch automatically run when I open up the terminal. And to do that, you just open up bash RC. And from here, I'm just gonna scroll down all the way to the bottom and just add a command. So if I enter a couple times, I could just type in NeoFetch then save this out, close it, and then when I open up my terminal again, it should automatically run NeoFetch when I open up the terminal. So the next thing I'm gonna change is gonna be a lot to do with extensions. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out my desktop so you can see it a little bit better here. There we go. This is just standard Ubuntu. We've changed some of the scheming, some of the GTK themes, some general appearance stuff, but it still just looks like basic Ubuntu. So what I'm gonna do is go over to this page on Firefox and we're gonna go ahead and add some new extensions. So here, I haven't done this yet, so it's a good opportunity to demonstrate. Uh, it requires the GNOME shell integration built into Firefox. It's just a browser extension. Makes it really easy to install these GNOME extensions. So I'm gonna click on that, continue installation, add it, hit okay. One thing I'm gonna do is actually close out Firefox restart it, go back over to GNOME extensions, and we are good to go. So from here, we could go ahead and just add some extensions. I'm not gonna go over a whole bunch of different extensions. I have a separate video that I did that, but I'm gonna go over some that I want to really change the look and feel of the system. If I wanted to, I could go with a more traditional type desktop with a bottom bar for that, a good tool to use. I think it's on this next page here, right here. That's the one to get the traditional panel. But for this, I think I'm actually gonna go with dash to dock because both a good and bad thing about Ubuntu is they're generally behind on things. So they're still on GNOME 3.38. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. So you just check that on, click install, and then you can see how that changes the dock there. So now what we could do is actually configure this a little bit. So let's go ahead and open up our GNOME tweak tool. Let's go over to tweaks, extensions, and here you see the dash to dock. It's already enabled. Let's go ahead and go to settings here. And what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and throw this on the bottom. There we go. And from there we could change some things such as the dock size limit here. We can change the actual icon size. So you can lower and raise that if you'd like to. You could change what monitors it shows on. You could change the launchers, the behavior, the appearance. And speaking of appearance, let's go ahead and see what it looks like when we use our built-in theme. See, that looks pretty good. I am liking that, but the unfortunate thing, oh, where'd it go? There it is. The unfortunate thing about using that is then you can't customize it from there. So we're gonna actually disable that. And I'm gonna go ahead and enable shrink to dash, which will get rid of some of the padding here and customize windows border indicators. Let's go ahead and go with uh, squares. So you can see the bottom here. Well, you might not be able to cause my, I got 2K display. Added a square for the indicator saying that that is an application that is open. And right here, this is what I want. I wanna go ahead and lower, or yeah, lower the opacity a little bit. So from there, let's go over to customize opacity. Let's go to fixed. And I'm gonna crank this down just a little bit. Not too much though, I still wanna be able to see it. So maybe about there. And then let's go ahead and customize the color. And I'm gonna go with just a solid black. So let's go ahead and select that. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. Let's lower the opacity a little bit now that I made it black. Fantastic, all right. And we could change some behavior and stuff too, but I'm not gonna really worry about that stuff at the moment. Now, one thing I really need to add is the sound input and output device chooser. That's one of the big problems I've been having with this is every single time I reboot my system, it changes my audio inputs over here, so I need to go into settings and change that. So this overall is gonna make this a lot easier. With this enabled, I could go ahead and now click this and I will be able to actually choose my devices here. So that is very nice. All right, and I wanna make my panel transparent. So let's just pick one of these and hopefully it works that this is untested. And this is probably what you guys are probably gonna to wanna to do is play around with these, test them out, see what does and doesn't work for you. So that one's not gonna work because it's not to the latest versions. Maybe we could do panel settings, see what version that's on, no go. Okay, so this one might be a little bit better here. This one says it's uh, customizable. So we'll go ahead and enable that and we do see it's a little bit better when it comes to the transparency. Let's go ahead and close this out, reopen our tweaks, go over to extensions here and right there, adjustable transparency. So we have a easy slider to actually go ahead and adjust that transparency 
If we go full this way, you can see it's a black color instead of that ugly Ubuntu gray. But let's go ahead and put this like right here. And th there's so much more things that you could do other than what I've showed you just f uh, thus far. Uh, like I said, I would recommend checking out those uh, the top 10 extensions video that I went ahead and made. But now we're on a really good path. Let's go ahead and do one last thing. And that's getting rid of this absolutely cursed desktop wallpaper. And the one I generally go with pairs well with this Nordic theme is the Nordic wallpaper. If we go over here to the KDE store and you want the wallpaper, wallpaper and screenshot here, I'll just go ahead and link to this directly down below. So let's go ahead and save that as, throw it in our pictures, close this out. And then from there, we could do this through the tweak tool if we would like to go over to appearance and we have the background image. Let's go ahead and select this, go over to pictures, select the one we just downloaded and then hit open. And there we are. In my opinion, this looks so much better than what we were just running. If I open up this file explorer again, you can see the difference in the look from what we were running previously. Uh, we're still using the basic application launcher here. But even this looks a little bit better with those icon themes that we went ahead and added. And of course, if you don't want this kind of gnome style, you can completely get rid of it and just use something like Arc Menu if you would like to. Uh, with all that said, I do hope you and all... <laughs> with that said, big thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Big thank you to Mitchell Valentino, Phil Mack, Timo, Anthony, and Kyle. You guys are some top tier Patreon supporters, and if you are interested, you go ahead and click the join button down below or head over to Patreon if that is your platform of choice. Now, absolutely everything I highlighted in this video will be linked down below. So you go ahead and check everything out as well as the video where you can see a lot more extensions to really beautify and make your GNOME desktop environment much more functional. So again, have a beautiful day and goodbye.